Well, welcome back to the channel. You're with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist. We're going to talk on uh, Mika's idols. Now, Mika, a very interesting person here um, in the Old Testament, Judges chapter 16, 17. Um, thanks for joining me, viewers, and all the subscribers and people that are um, supporting the channel and interested in the content. Um, we're on the subject of serial covert chameleon. Uh, there's an element of this in all of us. It's not just one or the other. One's not better than the other. One's not worse than the other. But we do need to be able to navigate the way in which people behave around us and we need to protect ourselves from dark triad personalities which are all around us in micro-incremental ways. And they will sabotage us, they will try and affect our relationships. Um, and sometimes the less you say, the better off you are, believe me. Now, Mikkel, um, this man who was named Mika, um, who lived in the hill country of Ephraim, um, he had an odd relationship with his mother and there's not too much mentioned about his father at this point. Um, when we look at the background of this man, the priesthood um, was from the line of Levi. And these people knew exactly what God wanted and what they didn't. But Micah appears to be from the line of Moses. And I want to read you this. <clears throat> I found this be beautiful piece of information in the archives. Um, because Michal was a descendant of Moses, this could be part of the reason why he missed the fact that idolatry was not good for, for people, his people. It was not something that they were meant to be involved in or do. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, can I subscribe? Can I? I'll subscribe to my own channel. All right, so it says prior to this, that Moses was a leader and he was tied up in his leadership of the Jews, okay? And this was, and here we go, this all was very consuming on his time. Therefore, he did not connect in a personal manner with his children or grandchildren. And we need to understand this as men relative to our children and our grandchildren. We see that he married Zipporah, the daughter of a Midianite priest. Uh, and had two children. Now, these people weren't Jews. When God sent him to take the Jews out of Egypt, Moses had not even circumcised them, which was very unusual. This is part of the micro-incremental influence that Jephro, the father of Sephora, had on Moses in his dualistic cultural lines life. Moses was raised by the Pharaoh. He realized that by origin he was a Jew. Um, and in this split culturalization, he married a woman that was a Midianite. And it's funny, you know, how God uses people that are sort of multidimensional um, and not particularly of the perfection type uh, characteristic there's always some kind of flaw that allows him to bend and twist these people know how to bend and twist in a way that things just work out for them usually not all the time but usually remembering that Moses himself did not enter the promised land because he struck the rock out of anger but we see he hadn't circumcised his boys um, and bear with me guys there then halfway to egypt with his wife and children moses stopped and sent his wife and children back to the father-in-law's house while he alone continued on the journey to egypt to take the jews out of slavery now there's there's a bit of an element here of well you aren't jews i know you're my sons but go with your mother back to her place of origin and allow that part of your life to develop i've got a job to do here that's outside of that um, of which could be endangering to you therefore you just go back and we'll work that out later 
and it was not until the Jews were already out of Egypt, having witnessed all the signs and wonders both in Egypt and on the Red Sea, and had received the Torah at Mount Sinai, that Jephro, there he is, this is Jewish, this is from Jewish scholars, that Yitro, Moses' father-in-law, came to Moses to bring him his wife and children. And Moses' children had basically missed out on the Egyptian experience that all the other Jews had lived through. Okay, And basically what they're saying, um, what we learn from this is that if great people can have offsprings whose actions are not proper, then we who have no greatness about us, for certain, must be careful that we educate our children in their Jewish heritage, otherwise they will go off into the world and God forbid lose themselves. <clears throat> so what they're saying is um, these boys didn't get passed on the heritage. Um, just here, let me read this paragraph. As mentioned by the sons of Aaron, we do not find any becoming transgressors. Aaron married a Jewish woman from a very respectable home. He grooms his children into the work of the priesthood. In the long run, it seems that he was more successful with the offspring than his brother Moses was, reason being that he focused on his children. Um, I think there were some hiccups. I'm not 100% sure. There were some hiccups in the priesthood, but I don't think it was relative to Aaron. Back to our story then with a the background on Mika, who had um, was undeveloped spiritually by way of the Jewish uh, rites, and he lived in the hill country of Ephraim. One day he said to his mother, I heard you place a curse on a, the person who stole 1,100 pieces of silver. Now, this is giving you the weight of it. I'm not interested in the weight of it. But obviously before this she has said this. Um, now, curses are real. Uh, let me just tell you, I uh, dated a very nice woman, a lovely, gentle woman, um, for four years. And we got engaged and um, we went and told her dad and her dad said to be careful because I had five children. They were growing up, they were never any trouble. And what happened was that influenced her. Well, to cut a long story short, I said, well, let's get married, and she didn't want to. And I left it at that. I said, well, I'm dissolving this relationship because it's not going to move forward um, from here, and I want to go beyond this. Well, she cursed me. She used to curse me to die. She used to curse me to death and wish all sorts of harm and stuff. And I took it as a grain of salt in the sense of she's obviously hurt. Um, but she's brought it on herself. She didn't want to move forward. A Christian woman didn't want to come in under the marriage. I wasn't marrying her for control and manipulation. I thought we got on well and we were getting somewhere in life. And But she didn't want to do it. So I don't know why she got so miserably upset, but she did. And I had a very serious accident. Now, whether I brought that on myself or not, is another story, but the funny part about it, of all the people that were in the hospital when I got lumbered down to get x-rayed, she got a job there, and she was there. And I said to her, you should never, not, don't curse people to die, because I nearly got killed today. And she knew what I meant. So curses are real, I'm telling you. And here, and this has happened in other parts of the Bible as well, um, the curse that she put out in her anger for the loss of the money was put upon Mika because he stole the money. Okay, so he's living under a curse. Um, and I wonder what the curse was. Bear with me, I'm going to try and find it. Okay, guys, so we're really getting into it. We're getting into the Shalvai Hyman, Encyclopedia of Jewish, Jewish Women, mother of Mika. Um, she's nameless. Uh, when a nameless woman's money is stolen, she utters a curse. Her son, Mika, who is the thief, returns the money. She uses the money to install a shrine with idols and later to hire a Levite as a priest. This short story is a rare insight into ancient Israelite domestic religious practice. 
and the important role women had as leaders of household worship. Um, I got to sort of look at that very carefully because I don't think the women were the leaders in the house uh, under that thing. But let's start to interpret it in the spirit. The man named Micah from the hill country of Ephraim said to his mother, Now where's his father? That's what I'd like to know. Well, I can't find a record of any father of Micah, um, which is very interesting given that the mother, um, under Jewish rule, and this is what I mean about these mothers, you've got to be very careful here, um, the 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from you and about which I heard you utter a curse, um, she unintentionally cursed her son. And I want to just be honest with a lot of you guys I've had a lot of experiences with single mothers and oh goodness me I tell you I've seen some real devastating domestic culturalization allowed to take place with these boys and the fathers need to be reprimanded but oh boy I've seen some destructive parenting from sink from mothers really well this woman's gone so far as curse her own son and let's we're going to follow through with this to see if the curse holds but when there's no father guys i don't know if you understand what covert emotional incest is but it takes place they surrogate the eldest son or one of the sons or all of the sons and they make them partners. They begin to share intimate details with them. And the modern day ones let them help pick men off the internet for them. And they're involved in everything. But anyway, that's their problem. Um, here we see that the mother being very, very upset, and I would be by having stuff stolen from her. We see the naivety of this woman. Now, I want to say to you, a lot of these single mothers are naive, particularly when they're stave, starved of male attention. Um, they'll open themselves up to all sorts of strangers and um, do all sorts of um, sexual things to fulfill their lust. Um, but here, despite all that, this woman's cursed her son. Now, this is a cursed woman. She'll curse. Curses are real, as I mentioned before. Um, Galatians says, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus bore the curse of the law, which is a whole different set of um, teachings. But she said, this guy goes, Micah, I have the silver here with me. I took it. Now, he's fronted up. This shows you that thieves right for some one reason or another actually as a matter of fact guys let's be honest this guy knew that curses were real and that's why he bought the money back because he didn't want to go under a curse but the problem is if you've got a curse cursed woman as a mother right then you've got all sorts of trouble troubles predict troubles up ahead and it's predictable now, while he put his tail between his legs, who does this remind us of, guys? Judas. What did Judas do? He brought back the 30 pieces of silver, didn't he? But he was given the 30 pieces of silver. But again, he was given the 30 pieces of silver to betray Christ, wasn't he? Here, this guy's gone to his mother's purse or hidey hole and taken the money. You'll see that these young adult men They'll steal money off their mothers because they're used to their mothers giving it to them. They'll steal um, food. They'll steal drugs. They expect the mother to support them. They'll uh, drain the mother emotionally. They'll blackmail the mother emotionally and vandalize her, um, threatening suicide and making suicide attempts. I know, um, guys, let's just get real here for a minute. Uh, the last woman I was married to, her son was deeply in love with his mother. They used to kiss on the lips. It was gross. Um, and say all sorts of strange things to each other. Uh, but when there was a sign of a breakup taking place in our marriage, because I'd had enough of him, 
he feigned um, passing out, pretended he passed out, and all this other stuff just to make sure that his mother would take him away. And she did. It was really pathetic, really, really pathetic. I couldn't see the back of him quick enough, to be honest. Um, and what will happen is these people, right, they'll steal from their mother one minute and then they'll hold them and kiss their neck and um, lie in bed with them the next. That's how bent and twisted these people are. Now, he's brought the money back. Even though he stole it, there's no sign of this woman, right? Look, this is what I want to show you. Please watch. There's so much in this. So we've got a thief. We've got covert emotional incest. We've got money that's been... This is how dysfunctional these people are, right? They don't know the Lord. They're not living under the, the ways of the Lord. Um, they've brought the money back, which he'd taken from his mother. And let me, me remind you, these male adults today and women, male women, will steal money off their parents. They'll siphon loans off their parents and not pay them back. They'll expect food off their parents and, um, and, and not be contributive. Um, you'll go on, you'll sit down to have sausages and mash and they'll want scotch fillet and vegetables. I've seen all this, guys. I've seen all this. I've seen all this, viewers. I've seen it with my own two eyes. Um, not in my household. Oh, no. Um, and this guy, because of the curse, right? Did he bring it out of, back out of conscience? No. He brought it back out of fear. And there's a big difference, right? Had that curse not have been pronounced, I ask you viewers, would he have brought the money back? I'm asking you, and I want an answer in the comment. Please help me. Would he have brought the money back without that curse? Hey? Because he heard it. I heard you curse. And I've the silver here with me. I took it. Then his mother said, Blessed be my son by the Lord. Now, what do we see there, guys? I'll tell you what we see. We see the we see the omission of discipline, right? If my son took money off me, right, and brought it back, I'd take the money back, but I'd apply some kind of discipline. I wouldn't be saying, blessed be my son by the Lord. Um, No. So she's praised, right? She's praised the theft, even though he's brought it back. I know he's, look, please, honestly, He's brought the money back, and that's all well and good. But she's missed the whole thing. She's missed the evil that caused him to take it. <laughs> and this is what these mothers do. They miss. They miss it. They miss the evil that causes these people to steal the money. She didn't address the evil. They don't develop their children. They spoil their children. We're too easy today. Gosh, guys, honestly... Um, Proverbs thirteen twenty four. Whoever spares the rod hates their child. I don't care what you say. But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Okay, now that doesn't mean you beat them and bash them and abuse them. You teach them about their sinful nature. That's what you do. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. He that spareth the rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chastises him betimes. Disciplines him diligently. Um, there's Loves him, disciplines him diligently, disciplines him diligently. Disciplines him urgently, carefully chastens him. Okay? 
If you love your children, you will correct them. If you don't love them, you won't correct them. There you go, guys. There it is. The contemporary English version. If that ain't straightforward and easy to understand, come on. If you love your children, you'll correct them. If you don't love your children, you won't correct them. Did she correct him? No! No! And this is what's happening. This is what's happening today. These people are robbing their mothers. They're siphoning their mothers. They're emotionally vandalizing their mothers. And these women are not correcting them. That's why there's 80% of people in jails are single mother children. These people aren't developing into men. They can't get out and work the way that they should. They're little sulks and sooks. They don't want mummy to have a boyfriend. Guys, I'm telling you, it's a mess out there. I've run out of time. I've run out of time. And there we have the narc mother, the serial covert chameleon mother. Blessed be my son by the Lord. you got no right to... I'll tell you, she didn't even know the Lord. There's a lot of women running around at the moment saying God's a female. Well, that's bizarre because Jesus was not a female. Jesus was a man, as far as I know. He was circumcised. I'm telling you guys, honestly, it's a mess out there. Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now.